Hi, I'm Kelly. I have had five miscarriages, followed by some secondary infertility, and now I finally have had a successful pregnancy, and I like to share the information that I learned along the way with other pregnancy loss moms, and I hope to kind of spread some hope and uh, give information so that that way I can make the journey a little bit easier. So today we're going to talk about recurrent pregnancy loss and IVF. Is it a good idea to do IVF if you're having problems with recurrent miscarriages? I think IVF is kind of like an immediate answer that we naturally think of. I know for me it was. After I had my second, second pregnancy loss, I was thinking, I think I'm going to have to do IVF. And I think the reason why it feels like such an alluring possibility or option is because when you're going through pregnancy loss, there are so many unknowns and so much that you cannot control and it's just outside of your hands. But if you do IVF, there's a lot more control to it, right? Like you have a doctor that's watching the whole thing and you just, you feel more in control when you're doing IVF. Now, I don't know if you actually are in more control, but it kind of has that feeling, right? And I know that's what I initially thought. And I think the other reason why people might think IVF is a good solution is because uh, I've often heard that a common thing that OB doctors tell their patients, and I know I was told this, is that, oh, miscarriages happen because of genetic abnormalities, um, like the chromosomes just were abnormal, and the OB doctor might tell you, oh, you know, it's a good thing that it miscarried because there was probably a genetic issue, and this happens all the time. It's very common. Now, it is very common. It does happen a lot. But once you have had two, and then certainly after you've had three miscarriages, the chances of it being a chromosomal issue is actually quite low. It declines as you have more miscarriages. In one study, they found that the frequency of normal embryonic karyotypes, and karyotypes means chromosomes, um, significantly increases with the number of previous abortions, and a normal karyotype is a, in a previous pregnancy is a predictor of subsequent miscarriage. So what that's saying is that if you have had previous miscarriages where they were able to test the um, product of conception, it'll be called the POC, if they were able to test that and they found that it was normal and you're having multiple miscarriages, then the chances of it being a chromosome issue in subsequent miscarriages is very unlikely. And this study looked at 1,309 women with a history of between 2 and 20 recurrent pregnancy losses and within the first trimester. They found that the more miscarriages a woman had, the more likely her embryos were to be of normal karyotype. They were normal chromosomes. So most of the time, if you are having recurrent miscarriages over and over again, it's probably not the chromosomes. It's probably something else. So... What that means is that IVF might not help you if you're having recurrent pregnancy loss. At least it won't help you in the uh, sense of it being a chromosome issue. It's not going to fix the chromosome problem. There was another study that compared the rate of aneuploidy, which is that is abnormal chromosomes, of recurrent miscarriage with the sporadic abortion with that of sporadic abortion and found no significant difference between them. So they compared, were the chromosomes normal in people that had recurrent pregnancy loss versus people that just had one pregnancy loss? And they found there's no difference between them. Therefore, there may be an alternative mechanism responsible for the majority of miscarriages. So in my opinion, I don't think that IVF should be the first answer if you're having recurrent pregnancy loss. Now, it might be an a tool. It might be an option in your toolbox, but I don't think it's the first go-to. I think I would definitely recommend getting some further testing and maybe seeing a reproductive immunologist if you're having recurrent pregnancy loss first before you go the route of IVF, especially because IVF is expensive. So whenever you do go down the road of IVF, you want to have as much information as possible and you want to try to be like try to have everything as successful as possible, right? You really want to set your IVF up for success. So there are a few cases where I think IVF is helpful in pregnancy loss, in recurrent pregnancy loss. And in those cases, I think it's usually a little bit further down the line. After you've had more pregnancy losses than just two, 
and after you've done some investigating and you've done some different tests to check to see what the problem is, if you have checked several other things and you're just not sure and you're looking for another diagnostic tool, then IVF could potentially be a diagnostic tool for you. And what I mean by it being a diagnostic tool is that, you know, IVF in and of itself is not diagnostic, right? It's a procedure that you go through, a very expensive procedure where you're trying to make a baby. But as you're going through this procedure, you're very much like under a microscope. They're going to look at your blastocyst, your little embryos under a microscope. They're going to be checking your ovaries every other day, looking at them through the ultrasound. They're going to be looking at your blood work several times over the course of IVF. So you're just going to have a lot more data points for this attempt of pregnancy, right? Whenever you try on your own, there's like a lot we don't know. Like we don't know how it's happening, what day it's happening. We don't know what your levels are. We don't know what your egg look like, what the sperm look like. There's a whole lot of unknowns when we're trying on our own. But when we go through IVF, we have a lot more data points and things that the doctor knows about this particular pregnancy. And so you might end up finding out an answer to what your problem is just by going through the IVF. Um, and another reason why IVF might be useful for recurrent pregnancy loss is that if you have gone through and done all the testing and you are seeing a reproductive immunologist and they've given you a protocol to follow. The protocol to follow for reproductive immunology is typically very expensive. Most of that medicine is going to cost you a lot of money and you can't just be taking that medicine like every month that you try. You can't, be, for example, if you're doing IVIG for example, that costs at least $2,000. You don't want to be spending that money every single month that you're trying. Um, and especially if you can't pinpoint exactly when your ovulation is, that makes it even more difficult. So if you do IVF in conjunction with your immunology protocol, then you can really know what days are the correct days and you can kind of like pack a big punch, like you're doing everything at the same time and you're trying to set this pregnancy up for success. You can time everything perfectly. So it can help in that timing kind of scenario and also in a cost effective scenario where you're trying to save yourself money so that you don't have to do so many treatments over and over again. Um, for myself, it helped me diagnostically. So I mean this is just one person, so this is not a study, I'm just telling you what happened to me, but for me what happened is that by going through IVF and being able to watch the whole thing, the doctor found that I was having an issue where my ovary would prepare the eggs, they would look great on ultrasound, everything looked like they were nice and big and plump little eggs ready for the picking. And then as soon as he went in and tried to extract those eggs, um, he, like they, they do it, it's, I don't, it's not exactly a needle, but it's like this little tiny catheter thing that goes in there to try to suck up the eggs. And as soon as the little catheter thing or whatever the tool is touched the egg, it would just like disintegrate. The whole thing would just like poof and go away. And so I lost a whole bunch of my eggs and they were only able to retrieve one out of like more than 20 that had grown during that cycle. And that to me, that's just like, I can't believe it. Like I went through so much pain with all the medicine and everything to get those eggs nice and big and ready. And only one of them actually survived the retrieval process. And the doctor kind of gave me some information about why that might happen. And then I found out that it was an issue. It was like a hormonal issue that I was having. I was able to correct that hormonal issue outside of IVF actually, and then naturally become pregnant. But I believe that if I hadn't gone down the road of testing everything, doing all the um, reproductive immunology protocol and treatment, and also doing IVF, I think I would not have came to that same result. I think I wouldn't have figured out that that was the issue and fixed the issue. So I myself am happy that I did IVF, but I'm happy that I did it after a lot of other stuff first.
And now the other thing that you might be wondering about with IVF is that you might want to try some pre-implantation screening to check for if the chromosomes are correct, if there's a, the correct number of chromosomes and all of that kind of stuff. You can check that before they actually attempt um, to implant the embryo or it's a blastocyst, to implant the blastocyst. So that's called PGTA. And that's an additional cost typically, in addition to whatever your IVF cost is. And they will retrieve your eggs, have them, you know, be fertilized by the sperm, and then take all of those blastocysts that did cr successfully fertilize and have them tested to see if the chromosomes look good for those. And then they will only take the ones that test positive or test um, normal and implant those. So that way you have a higher chance of having a chromosomally normal embryo. And I think a lot of people think this is a good idea for recurrent pregnancy loss. I know it certainly seems to make sense, right? In theory, that would make sense. If we're implanting a good embryo, then that should give us a higher chance of success, right? But the studies actually show for recurrent pregnancy loss, it's not really that helpful. And also because it is an additional expense, it is quite expensive and it doesn't typically return, like the cost effectiveness doesn't always pan out. Now, if you are of advanced maternal age, if you are definitely older, um, and I'm not talking about like in your 30s, I'm talking about your getting close to 40 or over 40, then that definitely might be an option for you because we know that egg quality can diminish, but that that's like for a subset of people. It's not going to be for everybody that has recurrent pregnancy loss. So those are the things that I have learned myself about IVF and recurrent pregnancy loss. I'd love to hear your story. Have you tried IVF? Has it worked for you? Or do you have any other ideas? Thanks so much for watching and I wish you hope on your journey wherever it takes you.